going to whisper because it's like really late in the night and my whole family is sleeping just I am awake because as you have already seen I am going to do an all nighter I have done all nighter very few times in my life for studying purpose but um, today I am going to do random things to stay awake until 5 in the morning I will see the sunrise and then I will sleep this is going to be an experiment because while you are studying you can do it because there is a motivation but this thing has no motivation at all i'm going to do just random things some productive some not but non-productive as well but let's hope for the best that i do i am having coffee so that i can stay put until five in the morning it's too sweet so now I'm going to watch a few vlogs um, so there are a few youtubers whom I really like and I watch their videos regularly but I have not been watching their videos for some time so there's at least five to six videos that I have not watched so I'm going to watch them to pass my time and also to get updated with the videos that are, they have posted recently. Let's get started. The first thing that I would like to recommend is a book called Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This book follows Harry Potter, a young wizard in his third year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The year starts off badly for Harry Potter when he learns deranged killer Sirius Black has escaped Azkaban and is after him. The use of time travel in this book is phenomenal. After you know the truth to certain events, you would certainly want to go back and read it again. It is a legend of a book in its own in general, but the time concept is chef's kiss. The next thing that I would like to recommend is a K-drama called Tomorrow. It is a supernatural fantasy that had me sobbing like a lunatic. It revolves around a group of grim reapers from the crisis management team who are entrusted with the task of saving societal humans and have to prove to them how important life is. Well, grim reapers are those who accompany one's soul after the death to the afterlife. And though this drama contains little amount of time travel, but it's worth seeing. This piece of drama is the most genius editing I've ever seen considering time travel. The whole drama talks about 10 different beings trying to commit suicide using time travel, powers and emotions. They teach people to see the end and that life will get better. The next thing that I would like to recommend is an animated movie called Your Name. It's about two teenagers who start to share a profound magical connections upon discovering that they are swapping bodies. Until this point, you think it's any other show where two people of opposite gender swap body and then fall in love. I've seen too much of this kind and for the very reason I was avoiding watching it. But my god, I regret delaying it. It's so much more complex than that. More than half of the movie I was thinking what the heck is happening. Time concept could not get better than this. It's a masterpiece. Things get really weird and out of imagination when they finally decide to meet. Trust me, when you start watching it, you didn't sign up for a casual rom-com. Very sleepy right now. If you can see my eyes. I have still time to go, so I'm waiting. If we can do this. The next thing that I would recommend is a movie called Happy Death Day. It's about Tree Gelbman who is a self-centered college-going girl who on her birthday wakes up in the bed of a student named Carter. At the end of the day, she is killed by a masked killer, but surprisingly, she wakes up in Carter's bed again on her birthday. She goes through all this times and again to find out who the murderer is, and along the course, she tries to mend her ways with the people that she might have hurt. When she thinks it's all fine now, the question is, is it? 
as she goes through the same day over and over again and the way movie proceeds the time concept gets really interesting it shows how smallest of our actions has major effect on what's about to happen amazing pace and gripping thriller it has a sequel too and i hope best from it as well How do I look? Is this painting any good? How was the food? If these questions would have been asked to me a few months ago, I would probably, no, most definitely would have said, oh, you look awesome. The painting is lovely. And the food, do you ask? I can't stop licking my fingers. I would have never told you that the lipstick isn't going well with the dress or the painting is just okay and your tacos were salty and undercooked for two reasons one i don't want to be on your bad side and two i lack guts but now ask me oh baby i will tell you not only what's wrong but what could be better one thing that has not changed and that's no comments unless and until asked if you ask me what i think i will actually tell you I think it's fair because I scrutinize my own work as well. And I won't lie if you ask me of my opinion. Of course, I'm polite about it. And what brought this change? Well, first thing first, I was always suffocated to lie when you don't like something. I agree, if someone criticizes my work, I will feel bad too. But later on, there will be improvement. Of course, unfair criticism is unwelcomed. I won't give and won't receive either. It all changed when I met someone, a very close friend of mine. Shout out to you, Tisha. We were roommates for just four months, but she knows almost everything about me. She taught me that it's okay to give honest opinion. If a hairstyle doesn't suit, then it doesn't. If a song she likes and I don't, then it's okay. We do not have to agree on everything. I loved how blunt she was with her opinions. It's her opinion and I can differ to. No big deal. She would always ask for suggestions and opinions and do what she likes. If you ask for a suggestion, it's okay to not to work on it. I became very blunt with her. If I don't like her pick, I'll say. If her choice of music is not mine, then I don't have to like it. It made things so easier. She would always welcome my opinion, not going with hers and also made me feel it's okay to differ and let people know as well. You can be true to yourself. I no more false appreciate anybody that way. I feel true to myself and to others as well. One thing that I still have to learn is to say no. I just cannot do it. I do not know if I am a people pleaser or just a nice person. It just does not matter if it's fair or unfair from other side but there's no way I'll say no. Saying no to things that don't hold your interest or hampers your own work is not selfish. Um, it's self-love and powerful. I'm still learning and yep, yeah, still learning. <laughs>
hi so i'm reading right now and i'm really very really tired i don't want to read anymore my eyes are just falling off and like i don't remember when I, where i was reading then i can start with like the top of the page which is very really funny but tiring at the same time um it's so late but there are still people on the road with the vehicles and it's ridiculous don't drive at night i want to sleep and i'm doing this stupid challenge but still it's, it's like fun most of the part was fun until i was not feeling sleepy but now i am i'm going to leave it in between cuz i'm going to end it as i've started already so um yeah so that's what i had to say yeah bye just turn like morning now i'm really sleepy um yeah so bye i'm going to go and sleep